G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Wild Reaches. I'm in all sorts of trouble here, bogged on the beach with a big trailer on, but look where I am. Absolutely magnificent, we've got reef fishing out the front, barramundi fishing north and south of where we are. But, the journey didn't begin here. There's a reason why I'm here, who I'm with, and exactly where I am. So let's get back to the start. Okay. Mm. I, I do too. I can't swear. I can't <laughs> talk about drugs. <laughs> so many rules now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's bullshit, eh? Like, yeah. Yeah. G'day, guys. Welcome back to another episode. If we can get Dan to stop talking, I'll do the intro here. Sorry, mate. I was just going to say, like, um, <laughs> what are you going to say? You're low fire. And so far, what are you I'm on fire. <laughs> Sorry. This episode's going to be a bit different. We're actually we're not in the bush. We're having a party. We're celebrating the 100th episode of Wild Reaches. This fellow was here from the beginning. Can't so believe we're, in, so we're here. here. I can't believe we're here for a 100th episode. Oh. Can't yeah. believe you're here, mate, back for together. 100th episode. Yeah. Back together. Yeah. So everyone wants to the know, team. cover your ears, Miller. Where the f has Dan been? Oh, where hasn't he That's been? Number one question. <laughs> Two years. Where hasn't he nah. been, mate? That's more of a question. <laughs> no, we're it's going to take more that. than an episode. <laughs> we're going, yeah, motocross. That's it. Anyway, we're having a bit of a shindig here. We're about to watch the teaser for season seven and um, have a bit of a cook up. You guys get to jump into a normal episode up there on the Cape, and hopefully one day we'll get Dan back on the Wenlock. We'll do another drift or something like that. took Nathan two hours to get this going. <laughs> like, subscribe, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs up. That's a wrap, baby. That's a wrap, baby. <laughs> I have two little pieces of paper here folded up. There's two names in there. I have no idea who they are. My wife's done this for me. Um, but it's everyone who everyone who put their name down and went into the draw on Instagram to win two prizes. One is the EcoFlow River. Thank you to EcoFlow and to Adventure Concepts. And one is a prize pack from us. Really, it's coming from a few of the sponsors as well, but a big pack of lures, a Wild Reaches shirt, some stickers. Um, what else is gonna be in there? A tire deflator and a few bits and pieces from Battery World cap from Ray Marine, maybe a fishing shirt from Ray Marine. So some cool stuff in there. That's going to someone on Instagram. And the big prize is the EcoFlow River. So let's open up. Actually, no, sorry. Before I open these, we're gonna leave these right to the end of the episode. I'm really sorry about that. But while I got you here, hit that subscribe button down below for me. And also, if you're enjoying the episodes, give us a thumbs up, because it really helps that algorithm, gives it a kick in the ass to get our numbers up. Thanks guys. Good morning, guys. How cool is that? It was three palm cockatoos. We just started the morning, heading south. Oh, there's another one over there. There's four. Four palm cockatoos. And we just screeched to a halt because I heard them calling. And he was right here in this tree behind me. I hope the footage comes out. Oh, there's another one over there. I think there's five of them. Wow. Hmm. And then just flew up just to get a closer look. That was, that's probably the closest they've come to me. That was epic. They're just hanging around. There's two over there still. Three little. One there, one there. They must have a nest or something in here. Yeah, yeah, it was there. Yeah. I would think definitely had a nest up there. Me too. Yeah, it was sitting there. Maybe, maybe there was. Because they nest in the hollows, right? Yeah, yeah. Like that dead tree there. Or something. Wait, 
with me, bro? Yeah. Right, oh, buddy? Yeah, bro. Look, there's a fucking bunch up there, bro. Do we need the other roof? Oh, no. It's good to buy it, bro. Oh, you can't race it? Yeah. yeah. Well, we can um, throw something. Yeah. So this spot here is an old outstation at the top of the river. This area is called Nanda, I think because of the Nanda tree or the Nanda tree, uh, non, uh, Nanda, Nanda plum. But you can see here an old outstation, just like any, um, any mission, any outstation, anything from back in the old days up here in Cape York. There's always mango trees, coconut trees. And Tremaine has Found some semi ripe ones. Oh, they're big mangoes too. Yeah, bro. So, if you missed the last episode, I'm out here on country. Utalungu. Yeah. Utalungu country. Um, this is Tremaine, he's a traditional owner of this country here. And we're following the story of a young French castaway um, named Narcisse. And when he landed here in Australia, he was 14 years old. Um, he was a cabin boy working on merchant ships. and he was left ashore by because um, they, they shipwrecked and he was left ashore by the um, by the rest of the crew and they took off in the night and a local clan which was actually the clan one of the clans uh, it, within this tribe the night island people they came and rescued him and um, we're sort of following that story trying to find where the, that clan which is uh, in front of the night island being the night island people oh that was so close we're trying to find one of their camps and we're going to camp down there tonight and just try and find, you know, a bit of the history there. Um, the Night Island people were seagoing people where their country went from right out of the reef, the Night Island and further out, right through to the shore, through the mangroves, through the paperbark forest, then the rainforest, through all these freshwater streams and right up into the mountain range behind us. And um, and then obviously to the north they had the Kukul Yao tribe and to the south they had the Umpala tribe and there's a lot of stories of wars between the two and ceremonies and trading all sorts of things and we just want to get down there on the country and um and kind of tell a bit more of the story and, and do a bit of fishing obviously we might um might do some spearing get some crayfish but yeah that's the plan we just stopped here for a couple of mangoes and um we'll hit the tracks oh you go on they're yeah, nice and soft too. Not like those ones yesterday. Okay, this for a feed. Mangoes for brekkie. Oh, yeah. Which is yeah, a good one. This one here. Yeah. You'd, some of them are green, but they're soft, hey? They're yeah, ready to yeah. go. I like them ones, no. This one here too is pretty green, but it's pretty soft. Yeah, that's good. Green ants on it. Oh, no wonder this one is not soft because I knocked it and I catched it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Makes it all bloody maze. Did I just see another bloody mango tree somewhere? Mate, this one's perfect. Guilty? Guilty. Guilty. Alright, so yesterday, Tremaine pointed out this tree called Ilti. And look at these little tiny fruits. You got a pip in them. I keep saying this, but this is the best bush food I've ever had, the sweetest. Got the black one, bro. Mm. There's a few one here, right? Eh? So when they're all black, you just grab a whole handful. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Got a mango, Mr. Yeah. What a feast. the black one, it's so juicy. Yeah. Mm. Sweet. Yeah, so Tremaine's saying that when it's loaded, like you imagine all those there. Oh, look at this butterfly. Holy hell. Look at the colours on that. Yeah, when they're loaded, you just grab a whole handful and put them in like a bottle or a little plastic bucket. Then you just have handfuls of them. Like that there. Imagine that all black. I can't reach them. All right, we've got to keep moving or we'll never get there. We've got barramundi to catch. Uh, this Nonda plum 
Do you have to eat them when they're on the ground? Or you can you pick them? Yeah, you can pick them on the soft ones. Yeah, so like I said, this area is called Nanda. And I think it's after the Nanda plum. This is the Nanda plum tree. You can see it's really obvious with these flowers and the, and the color of the leaves and the way it droops. Very obvious, obvious tree. And I've only ever eaten them recently when they're on the ground. Because that's, that's when they're nice and soft. These are all rock hard. But this tree is absolutely loaded. Two fruits here. And it tastes just like a plum, but a bit more flowery. Oh, they're a bit hard, but we'll try and find a soft a, a tree with some soft ones and show you guys what a feast of fresh fruit this morning. Right here. I reckon that might hit the tinny. It might just push under it though. If you just keep an eye on it. This is apparently another old homestead here. They've had a dozer in here, but you can see there's bits and pieces everywhere. And another rip of mango tree. Find the beach? Oh yeah, brother. Cool. We're pretty close, are we? Yeah. Five minutes now, I think. So, we've just come past that homestead and there's a fire burning straight across the track. I'm a bit sketchy to drive through it because of the um, fuel on the back. We're just going to send the drone up yep. and see how far it goes, how far this fire's going. You can see it on the track down there behind me.
just to play it safe, we've um, pulled up back on the homestead where the mango tree is and the fire's down here in front of us. It's just not worth it with all the fuel I've got on the back and the quad bike. This actually happened last season over in Cockabera country, I think it was, or Kunjin country, um, over in the Gulf where we, you had to change plans because there was a huge fire. This doesn't look that bad. It doesn't look like there's much behind it. So we should be able to, if once it backs down here in this front, we'll be able to just punch it through there, I reckon, and get to the other side. You just, you just don't want to get caught out halfway through. Anyway, I might make a cup of coffee. Tremaine's gone down to the little creek. We'll check that out too, see if there's any crocs down there. See that one. Into that big black hole. There's another big block from in front there. <laughs> Sketchy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, nice to pull in here. So for any of our new viewers, this is Cape York, far north Queensland, far northern Australia where saltwater crocodiles um, are pretty much everywhere. Every water course you have to be, just well I just assume that there's a crocodile in it, but especially when you get to a spot like this, a big black hole, well and truly fresh water, but the saltwater crocodiles live, oh. <laughs> the saltwater crocodiles live in here and um, their food source, a pig's coming down for a drink, wallabies coming down for a drink. YouTubers like me coming down for a wash. So you've got to be extremely careful. Yeah? I'm not going where you went. Oh God, dear. That croc would just be waiting for the second person, being me, to run through there. Oh yeah. That is a big one. The one over there didn't look that big, but that. Oh, yeah, he's in there. Hang on, I'm going to run up and check this fire. Yeah, yeah. You can hear that fire roaring. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this fire is starting to move pretty quick. Uh, it's crossed over to this side, but I think we'll be alright. Might just grab my coffee and stay at the car. I've got to be ready, I'm worried if, if the fire does make a run through this section here. I'm going to be ready to turn around and get the hell out of here. Should be okay though, because this isn't... Because that's burnt over there already. Oh, that's pretty bloody worrying. Alright, we're going for it. Straight through the wall of fire. <laughs> no, it's looking like... It's pretty. T it's tamed down a fair tamed bit. Down now. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting 
some meat cheese, isn't it? Yeah, the beef got in now, bro. Wow. Yeah. Man, what? Just go for a little walk and check out the track, the trees. Yeah, yeah. That's the shaded part over there, though. Okay. Yeah. That breeze is in. Yeah, I see what he means about the reef. It's right there. Yeah. So what's that island? Is that Night Island? Island right there. We're right in front of it. Yeah. Right in front of it, bro. It's Night Island. Night Island. Yeah. Oh, there. Oh, I was looking at this little one. I <laughs> nah, didn't even see that. That's for me, right there. <coughs> yeah, well, if it's glassy in the morning, we'd make it out there, maybe, yeah. with a tinny. That'd be sick. A new place. I've never been here. Never been here, bro. It's exciting. All because of you. All because I met you. Yeah, bro. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'll come back and definitely do that spear. Get the spear going. Yeah, get the spear going and you'll probably be ready with your rod and we'll yeah. go back down for a walk. Sounds good, mate. We should be able to get plenty of fire with all the drift. Oh, yeah, look at all the driftwood. See you soon. Yeah, I'll be back, bro. Alright. We've made it, guys. This is the spot that I really wanted to get to. And what I didn't tell you back there is we met a fellow named Stephen and his, and his girl, Crystal. And um, this is their country as well. well. Her country's the next clan down. This country here is his. And you can see he's been in here in a dozer. Um, when we were sitting down waiting for that fire to burn through, he was the one that lit the fire and he's pushed the track through with the dozer that we were on this morning to get out here so that all the people in town can come back in here onto their country. So yeah, that's why you saw tracks through the fire there in front of us. It gave me a bit of um, a bit of relief to see that someone had driven through there. But this is it. Right out here behind me is the Night Island that I keep going on about. Um, so the clan in here, you know, 200 years ago were called the Night Island people. And this is the clan that took Umglo in and um, treated him as one of their own. You know, he was initiated as a Night Island man uh, when he was 17 years old. Got the scars across his chest to show um, different things like marriage for every wife, uh, scars on his arm for every time he killed someone in battle. Amazing stuff. But this is it right here. This is where the Night Island people lived, or the beach people they were called, or the sand beach people I think, I think it was. And um, you can see pigs have been right through here causing all sorts of destruction. The pigs come in at night on all these beaches um, and dig up turtle eggs, which is a, a just another, you know, another bit of destruction that they cause. So uh, Tremaine's gone for a walk up. There's a creek up there somewhere. He's going to look for a barramundi for lunch. And I'm going to look for somewhere to set up camp. Well, but you can see here, this is all reef. Loaded with coral trout, bloody um, crayfish, all sorts of stuff. So hopefully we can get out there too. Hopefully this weather holds up and we get a nice morning tomorrow morning, glass out. We might even shoot out to the night island. I'll tell you guys a story a little bit later about um, like the dream time story of that island. But for now, I just want to find a camp. Yeah, I reckon we push down here and find some shade under the sheer oaks. It's always nice to sit under the shade of a tree with that nice breeze. It really cools you down compared to an awning. Ah, so excited. My tire monitor is wigging out. This is a little drive tech <coughs> tire monitor and I really recommend you guys get one of them. Um, you know, you're driving down the highway, you can see what all four of your tires are sitting at. So if you have a slow leak or something like that, it could save your life. I really love that thing. Um, but yeah, I've just dropped my tires down to about 30 PSI all the way around, just to begin with. We'll see how that goes. Um, the tire monitor obviously thinks there's something wrong, so I have to turn that off. I'm just going to see how that feels. If it still feels like the, the car's working too hard, I'll drop them down to like 20. But yeah, big heavy load like this. Normally, you know, I mean, I've had my tires down to a 12 PSI in the past, but when you've got a big heavy load like this, especially out here where we are, you don't want to roll a, a tire off the bead. So uh, yeah, let's give this a crack. 30 PSI, here we come. Uh, this kind of this kind of beach stuff, um, you, see, you want that momentum, so I'm gonna, I'm, actually, because I've got the trailer on, I'm gonna go low range. Oh, I nearly lost the net. 
That was lucky. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go low range, but you want to get your momentum up. So about third gear, low range when I hit that soft stuff. You really do not want to change gears. Oh, that sounds hot. You don't want to change gears um, midway through in that soft sand, or you're just gonna lose momentum and just stop. So yeah, uh, normally on this kind of thing, I'd go high range and get your speed up, but um, with the trailer, I want that. I want that bit of extra momentum, that, sorry not momentum, that bit of extra grunt behind me. That didn't work. I'm gonna have to let more air out of those tires. I'm gonna take them down to 20. And do the same on the trailer as well. Oh All right, take two. 25 PSI on the trailer and the rear wheels. The front wheels, the front tires actually look okay. I know that's a bit weird, but I'm just gonna leave them because I'm a bit lazy. And we're just wallowing in like a pig. All right, I'm gonna go max tracks, get four under the car, just to get myself up and out, try and get that momentum and keep going. If that doesn't work, then I'll go down to like 20 PSI all the way around. Still got plenty of tricks up my sleeve. I'm gonna drop all the tires now to 20 PSI. And uh, then the next trick is dump the weight off the trailer. Take the quad bike off. Take the tinny off, which I need to do anyway, because we're gonna go fishing. So it's not that big a deal, but I wanted to do it later at camp. you do it far out that was hard work it's extremely hot you always seem to get bogged or stuck in the middle of the day look at that sun's right above us must be a little bit further must be one o'clock the reason i wanted to get here was for this shade under the she oaks i know i'm out in the sun but i'm going to set the awnings up and tremaine and kimberly and that can camp here in the shade oh you want to know i'm not not you know I'm not claiming it or anything, but you need to know what you're doing coming out here to places like this. The only vehicle with a lot of weight. Um, you know, you imagine if I tried to get down on the beach there and got stuck with the tide coming in or something. I, c I can't explain to you how remote we are. We are in the middle of nowhere on the east coast of Cape York, so far from help. Um, yeah, you, you just, you need to have a backup, you know, like an EPIRB for the boat. A, a personal e -burb for hiking and fishing up here for snake bites, things like that. So if, if it does hit the fan, you just flick that switch and um, and get help. But you don't want to be putting the um, the rescuers, their lives in, in jeopardy for no good reason. So don't come out here and do this stuff unless you're prepared. Does that make sense? <laughs> All right, that's enough serious stuff. Let's get the quad bike off.
is the creek. And this is the first creek. I don't even know how many are here. But um, this is the first creek. Now let's go find Tremaine. Looks like we have to cross the creek. I think I could see him on the other side there. Uh, so we just got to keep in mind it's dead low tide soon and then the tide's going to start coming in. So if we cross this creek and the tide comes up, we uh, we got to get back across somehow. Now I'm not going to stuff around at all with crocodiles. This water's not dead clear. Um, and I've I've been told that there are a lot of crocodiles in this area, some big ones. Hopefully we'll capture them with the drone, maybe tonight or tomorrow morning, but I've got to find a safe spot to cross here. Looks pretty cool though, hey? Especially as this tide starts pushing in, this place might turn on. So the other thing this time of year is irigangi and box jellyfish. Um, during the wet season in far northern Australia, box jellyfish, uh, they move out. Actually, I don't even know where they come from. You see them in all the little mangrove lined bays, um, building up to the wet, and then throughout the wet season, they are even out of the reef. You have to be extremely careful, suit up if you're going to go diving, and just be prepared. Always keep your eyes open. The box jellyfish you can see, they're huge long tentacles, up to two meters long, and they're all purple and blue and all sorts of colors. But the irigangi, you can't see them. They're tiny and they're clear. Hey, mate. Oh, you got lunch? Oh, it's a jack. Yes. I'm happy with that. What are you saying? Thing there, bro. Oh, you saw another one? Yeah. Not the first thing, the flat, yeah. flat tail of the seam right in there. Yeah. Need a spear, hey? Yeah. I could probably catch him with a line. <laughs> Try it, then. Why not? Oh, yeah, my Ooh, he's quick. <laughs> So if you missed yesterday's episode or last week's episode. Then we went back and um and cooked it up so the first time I've ever eaten stingray it was absolutely delicious. So if you missed that episode, jump back and check it out. Oh, look at this for a spot. Towards the shadow. Get ready, get ready, bro. Get ready. One was sitting right there, bro. He's still almost came out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Double cast stuff there. Oh, he followed your lure, bro. He's just right there with a black there. See this tide there? See this tide there, bro, with a rope? Or a thing is? No. You see the other right there, right? Yeah, you'll always right there now. <laughs> you got me so excited. Our croc slide just here, guys. I reckon we go down here and check them out. Yeah, let's check them out. Because there's one spot, bro. This is the spot we're gonna hit, boys. We find it with this pod, though, right now. Oh, a little bit. 
Oh, really? This looks good. Nice little corner here. Nice and deep. These yeah. fish moving in here. All these trevally or something. Valley. That was a jack. <laughs> get another one in there. We've got to get this barrel. Oh, I reckon there's a few barrel underneath that snag. Hey, here we go. Oh, he's there again. Do a big pause back there. He was there again. <sighs> yeah, they're Trevally. That's a bigger Trevally. Can't get that barra back out. Go on. He's still on. Tremaine's on. He's on. Hey. Oh, he came off. Oh, here's a croc slide, look at that. Croc slide there, probably, probably from high tide when this here was underwater. Oh, geez, we don't have much, fu much fun, much luck landing fish. Another one. He's on again. He's on again. You dropped it again. Where is he? I'm coming. No! Another barra. Yeah, <gasps> you be careful there, mate. There's a croc in here. What do you got? That's a barra now, bro. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yes. Woo! There's a few in there, in that little hole. Yeah, bro. I bet he's gonna get the rod here. Look at this little rod Tremaine's using. He loves this thing, hey? Yeah, bro. Oh, oh, no, 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 Do you want me to grab the leader? Oh, see, see another one. Yeah, I did. There? Do you want me to grab the leader? Thanks, bro. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, watch out, bro. Ah, oh, just ah. like that, you're off. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yes. Look at that, nice ah, clean no. one. Okay. You get the rod up, yeah, we'll, we, uh, haven't eaten much today, but it looks like we're having Barra and Jack for afternoon tea. Oh, yeah, yeah. Photo. oh what? What? Is that that was like a little croc or a big bar? Want a rod? Yeah, that's good. That's good. Ah, <laughs> thanks, bro. Keeper, yeah, that's a keeper. I'm having a dinner for sure. Tremaine's on again. First barra for the season. How good's that? 
popcorn bar for dinner tonight. Tremaine's on behind me. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good now. It's getting that good time. Yeah. Oh, yes, mate. That's a beauty. He did, he smashed it. Wow. He's a nice thick one, eh? Hey? He's healthy. Yeah, yeah. How thick he is there? I think the bigger one's hitting, bro. Yeah, man. Hitting. I don't have any clothes with me, though. What, what do you reckon? I think we just gotta. Hit the road soon, eh? Yeah, I think we're gonna have to. Yeah. I got a knife, we can bleed him back at the backpack. Yeah, bro. Yeah. He's a good one. You reckon, bro? It's up to you. You got the family coming. So there you go. We've caught caught a few. We've got we're keeping what three or four, four fish. I'm gonna have one for dinner. We're eating stuff all today. Tremaine's family's coming out near our camp a bit later, so we've got enough fish there to feed everyone, eh? Yeah, man. I need a, I need a good feed, hey. Yeah, bro, oh, that mango just took it. All right, we made it back to camp, and I got a little feast here. Four barramundi and a little mangrove jack. Now I'm going to knock the fillets off the three bigger barra and leave the little mangrove jack and the little the little barra. We might throw them now straight on the coals. But what an absolutely amazing day to get to this special place. You guys know the story of why I'm here now and um, there's plenty of little stories to go to talk about the clan, the, the clan here that, that are the Night Island people and the life that they lived and um, there's actually a dugout canoe down there which could very, very well be one of theirs. So tomorrow I'm going to take you down to there and then we might put the boat in and head out to Night Island. Pretty sure the weather's going to be good in the morning. Being the first night of the trip really with Barramundi, I want to cook popcorn barra. I've got a special way to do it tonight. I brought some nice seasoning so Popcorn barra for dinner for the whole family, all the families here. And then um, I'll pull the tinny off the roof, pull the trailer off, put the trailer together and get ready for some big adventures tomorrow. Well, what a cracker start, hey? That little honey hole up there loaded with barramundi. Um, you know, out here with the family, with the local traditional owners, this is really special. But uh, I'm probably going to wrap up the episode here. Um, I'll film a bit of the cooking back there later on, but we just want to chill out, have a fire. I'll bring you guys along for the ride, but probably won't do much talking. And um, see you guys bright and early tomorrow for the next episode. Um, if you want your merch, wildreaches.com forward slash shop. Heaps of new stuff there, so go check that out. Some cool new designs. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all that stuff on YouTube. You know, you know the deal. And I'll see you next week on uh, Wild Reaches, the next episode. It's the end of the episode, and it's time for a giveaway. All right. Now, first of all, I'm going to open the IG one first, which is Instagram. That's the, the lure pack, the Wild Reaches T-shirt, some stickers, all that kind of jazz. Um, that's going to one of our Instagram followers who who jumped on that comment uh, on the post and commented an answer to the question that we put out there. So thank you to everyone, um, the Patreon crew and all the Instagram crew for, for jumping over there and supporting us to begin with and then also for going in the draw for the prize. And if you're watching this and you want it and you like the prizes, I'm a bit like, I'm a bit funny about them. Um, my wife really wanted me to, <laughs> oh, sorry babe, I shouldn't have said that, <laughs> throwing you under the bus there, but my wife really wanted me to do this, um, to start giving away a, a bit more gear and I didn't want it to come across like, you know, kind of, kind of like corny, just like every other bloody YouTuber, just giving away stuff. Um, I want it to come from the heart. So this is a product that I actually like, and um, I've used it. I rate it, and I want to give one to one of you. So big thanks to EcoFlow, like I said. Big thanks to Adventure Concepts for making this possible, and big thank you to all of you for watching the show and getting us to 100 episodes. All right. So here we go. Instagram, Instagram for the, the big prize pack from Wild Reaches. Bryce Taylor. Now, Bryce, I have your contact details. I'm sure I do. Melissa will find them and we'll send that out to you as soon as possible. If I don't have your address, I will. Don't comment below. Do not do that. Don't send me your address on here. I will contact you on Instagram and then you can DM me your address. So congratulations, mate. We've got a big pack of lures coming. I hope you're a fisherman. All right. Patreon community. Yeah, what, what can I say? I just, I love all of you. Thank you so much for supporting us. Um, if you're not part of the crew, jump over to patreon.com forward slash wildreaches. Here we go. Now, I haven't looked in here yet. Patreon, J. 
Hagmans, Hagmans. Jay, I know exactly who you are, but I can't pronounce your last name. I'm sorry, mate. Jay, shh. you live all the way in SA, so we're gonna have to post this thing down to you. Um, but congratulations, mate. Jay, you've been there. You've been there since the beginning, I think, mate. Supporting us on, on YouTube, commenting every week. You know, on pretty much every every uh, Zoom call on, on Patreon. So, you're a legend. I'm stoked that went to you, mate. And thank you to everyone for jumping on there and commenting. Um, like I said, it's a ripper bit of kit. Jay, you're going to have a good time with this, mate. I'm sure you get the kids out and go camping with them. And maybe even, um, I know you're in the boat a lot. Maybe it'll help you out in the boat. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Let's get back to the episode. Good eye. <laughs> They're one of my favorite things. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Oh, yeah. Try <laughs> next time you go for a ride. So you add someone and go like Yeah. Spare. 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 This bloody sent the drone up, following us through the, the scrub here in between the two mountain ranges. Absolutely beautiful. And the drone started going flat. So I'm flying it back and I couldn't find the car. And the distance was saying it was getting less and less and less. So I'm on, I'm on the right track. And I got to like 10 meters from the car, but there's no car there. And then the battery went flat and it's landed. We we're in the middle of bloody nowhere. And, um, but there's only one track, so we've just split up, taken two radios. Tremaine's gone forward, I'm going backwards. We're gonna find this drone. Hopefully there's only one track. Ah, I just wanna to get to the beach and put the boat in. Go fishing. This season's been a really slow start to fishing. Ah. Got it. Okay, all good bro. Oh, I got it and it's in one piece. 
that's the second time. Remember the time I lost this thing out over the sea? Had to land it on a beach, that was over in Gulf Country. At the beginning of the season, I, I had a brand new Mavic 3 just to get that better content for all of you guys. And um, literally the first day of filming, I crashed it into a tree really bad while it was following me on the quad bike and smashed the gimbal, smashed all the propellers, smashed the filter and I had to send it away. Can't wait to get out on the beach now for a very cool breeze. Me too. I need to swim. Any more streams to swim in? Um, nah, but there's a fresh water. Right? There's fresh water? Ah, oh, spring. Yes. Oh, where are my keys? A little bit more behind the scenes for you guys. Johnny, which is uh, which you meant the last episode, Tremaine's uncle, uh, Tremaine's godfather. Just rocking up and just got so bogged on the way in here and um, I've just spent a good hour, hour and a half down there with Max Tracks trying to get him through. Then they wouldn't work finally after like the fourth attempt and then we we're trying to winch him with a quad and now I've got to get the cruiser down there and pull him out. Get back here to camp, have a bloody wash and then cook some dinner. Who's out eh? Woo! Yes! This hardware and yeah. fly up there and just yeah. leave it out. Awesome. Yeah, bro. Thanks, guys. Uh, Alright, I'll get you. Do you want to chuck those max tracks on yours? That's a wrap. Can you say like? Like. Subscribe. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh, Dirty here. Dirty. As you all know, last night we had the 100th uh, episode party, which was pretty, pretty amazing. Um, it was a tight little group here with some of the Patreon community, a couple of the sponsors, and um, we just had a really good night. While I got you here, before you take off, before you fly back, I want to, I want to offer more to the Patreon community, basically. And I don't really understand it. I don't understand what you guys get out of it, except for the community, and we obviously do the giveaways and things like that. But a couple of questions: What? Like why would you why why would you contribute to to me having so much fun? Well, you, you're doing the stuff that I want to do, mm. and I'm running a business. So I can't do that, and you get bitten by mosquitoes, and I don't have to, <laughs> but I still go with you. Yeah. So yeah. to me, that sort of stuff uh, it makes just feel like we're a part of it, mm. and um, yeah, that's 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 the reason I watch. And yeah, I've always been an outdoorsy type of bloke. But I'm, I'm getting 58 years old now, punching mm. 60. Mm. You're still young and virile, you're still going for it. And I, yeah, I just, you're doing the stuff that I want to do. Okay. And it's really good. Okay. And what can I do to, um, don't touch that, buddy. <laughs> what, can, what can I do that, what are you doing? <laughs> what can I do to, um, to up the experience for the Patreon community? I'm always, I'm always open to ideas. And you guys let us know too. Comment below if you are a Patreon and you couldn't make it to the party. I think everybody needs to get onto the Patreon because look at that happened this weekend. Mm. Yeah, we um, we all talk on the on the on the Zoom meetings and stuff like that. We got to meet each other. Yeah. All of a sudden, Nick and I are making friends, and Bruce and Carmel were fantastic. Yeah, and were, hey. people that aren't members they need to join up and the people that are members that didn't come you need to make the effort and come because it's uh really good so it's community yeah it's great all right so more of this kind of thing more parties like i this think so. you can i think you're doing a fantastic job with the concepts that you that you're doing because it's what we what we want to watch mm. but we want to be involved a little bit mm. too so yep. this sort of stuff gets us involved okay cool mate well i appreciate you coming no worries thank you buddy all right all right, over, out. Well, I hope you all really enjoyed that episode up there in the Cape. I don't know what episode it was, but I know that the whole trip was an absolutely amazing experience. So I'm pretty sure you would have enjoyed it. Um, last night here was magic. It was it was so nice and I feel like it's the beginning. I'm just putting some batteries on charge. I feel like it's the beginning of um, something big with the Patreon community. Maybe twice a year we'll get together in different places and do catch-ups like this and just celebrate what we have. Um, but yeah, you guys missed the terrible speech that I did, so I thought I'd just let you know the gist of it, um, which is what tonight, to me, or last night, was really about, is uh, 
celebrating the show, not me, but the show, Wild Reach is what we're trying to achieve and celebrating everyone that's supporting the show. And everyone here last night heard how much I appreciate the patrons that showed up, um, some of the sponsors that showed up, some of the, the companies that I use, for example, John, the uh, national sales manager for Front Runner, who's a big supplier for Adventure Concepts. He drove all the way from Sydney for the weekend to be here to camp out. He cooked an amazing sticky date pudding because John's also, uh, you, you've probably seen me cook up a few of the fish dishes up the Cape and I say this is inspired by John. Um, he's got Aussie Bush Camping on Instagram and also the Gourmet Camp Chef. He's an amazing chef and he does a lot of it from the back of his ute or on the fire. So a big inspiration and he drove all the way up and um, hung out with us for two, for two days, which was so cool. So thank you, John. Um, you know, a couple of the Patreons came for like, um, Dirty came from uh, Victoria down in Melbourne, all the way up here for the weekend. And, and it just like, it's so heartwarming to know that people like that um, have got my back and supporting the show. It's, it's reaching out to people that, um, that I wouldn't have met otherwise. So really cool. But what you guys missed out on and what everyone missed out on was saying thank you to all of you who couldn't be here last night. Um, hopefully we can do something like this at some stage for everyone, for Instagram followers, for everyone on YouTube that's following, not just the Patreon community, but um, uh, I like to do special things for the Patreon community. So if you're not a part of that, jump over and check it out because there's gonna be more and more of things like this. Um, as you heard Dirty say, that's what everyone wants. So that's what we're gonna do. But yeah, 25,000 of you watching every single episode. Um, it's been three years, you know, millions of views. Um, 100 episodes and there's 25,000 at least of you watching every single episode which tells me I'm on the right path and I love what I'm doing and as long as I love what I'm doing and I'm getting that message out there um, about looking after this beautiful country and respecting everyone on this beautiful country uh, I'm going to keep doing it so heaps more to come I've got some big plans so this is nowhere near the end um, to me, this is, this is the very, very beginning. So big things to come. Thank you to all of you for watching. And uh, yeah, we'll keep it short. Big thanks to everyone that showed up last night, like I said. Big thank you to Nigel and Barry for, from Adventure Concepts because um, no one's got my back like you do. And except for my wife. Huge thanks to my wife for, and my kids, you know, for allowing me to do what I do, to go away for such a long time. Um, on all these trips and capture what I do. I couldn't do it without this amazing supporting family. So thank you. All right, let's skedaddle. See you on the next episode.